Good morning, and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Northern Chautauqua. We are joined by covenant, promises we make to one another to live out the religious values we hold dear. Ours is an inclusive and welcoming spiritual perspective, and today we welcome you to join us in celebrating Earth Week. Please join us in cultivating a generous life of the Spirit rooted in our Unitarian Universalist faith tradition. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yet again, come, 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 whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, ours is no caravan of despair, come, yet again, come. ago, we would be standing under one mile of sheer ice as the big glacier that formed Lake Erie stood right where we are standing now. A few days later, after it melted, there was a number of inhabitants that came here besides the grass and the trees. We had many animals, beaver and and deer, rabbits galore, and one of my favorite, the American turkey. Then the Erie moved in, the lost tribe of the Haudenosaunee. They inhabited this land for many, many years until, unfortunately, through warfare, they were extinguished. The least remembrance we have of them now is the name of the lake. After that, there were Anglos who moved in, first the French and then the English, and then my grandfather bought the land. Now by buying, I don't ascribe to personal ownership. I consider myself the present proprietor as the caretaker. In the Hebrew scriptures, it mentions that the people, man I suppose and woman, had dominion over everything. Well, if you look at the Latin word domus, it really means home. And to have dominion means to make a home. And that's what I've tried to do here. Make this not only my home, but open to anyone who can come and enjoy it to gain their own physical health, mental health, and spiritual health. And so with this in mind, I begin the ceremony with the, the native tradition of smudging. What I will do now is give thanks for the gifts that Mother Earth has given us. And we will start by facing the east. 
This is the season that we are concluding of spring. And I come to the, the, the great spirit of the East and I remember all of the things you have given us. The freshness of the air, the new grass, the beautiful flowers that are coming up all over this park. For all of the gifts that you have given us, great spirit of the East, we give you thanks. Now I turn to the South and I address the great spirit of the South. The spirit that gives us warm days, this warm summer days, the bright sun and the pleasures of summer, the outdoor living, the excitement, the growing season, all the gifts you have given us to pleasure our lives and, and help us to grow. For all of your gifts, I give you thanks. I turn now to the West, the great spirit of the West. You will give us a harvest in due season. Every year you provide us with plenty of food and enjoyment and gaiety and laughter and recreation, all kinds of good gifts. You carry us into the long winter months with sustenance and joy. For all of your gifts, we give you thanks. Great Spirit of the North, you will come in due time. Come with your cold and your snow and your quietness and your meditation and your ability to take us to a new place to think and to dream about what we will do with Mother Earth in the coming season. Thank you for all of this. And Father Sky, how many beautiful things you give us right now the blue sky and the white clouds behind me the sun and the beautiful sacred moon of night and the wonders of night for all of your gifts for all of your inspiration and awesomeness we give you thanks and mother earth whom we honor today particularly without you we could not stand here and enjoy all the gifts you give us right now Without even my, any of my help, you've given us these daffodils to my right, the narcissus in front of me, and the beautiful Labrador violets. For all of your gifts and for all of the things you do for us, we give you thanks. Great spirit within me, may I never falter, may I persevere, persevere to acknowledge you, to love you, be open to you, always learn from you and never give up trying to make mother earth a more beautiful home for all of the people and all of the creatures hope Isn't that beautiful? Labrador violet uh, came from Labrador. It's migrated, which is an interesting thing because um, we're all migrants. Even the natural, what we call the natural flora. This area is the Mahatma Gandhi, or Mohandas was his first name. Mahatma means great spirit. And he was given that title because of the great spirit that he had. He grew up with the Jains, and that is where he got his first idea of nonviolence. The Jains, in the very strict mode, will even carry a broom in front of them and sweep these the uh, dirt or sidewalk in front of them to make sure that they don't step on any ant or creature and cause it harm. They do not do harm to anyone. Gandhi was criticized because scorpions are very common in his part of the world and he did not close the door to his cottage at night. 
and he allowed them to freely come into the house if that's what they wanted to do. There was never a single case of anyone in his home being stung by a scorpion. This pretty planet spinning through space You're a garden, you're a harbor, you're a holy place Go This pretty planet spinning going through space You're a garden, blue giant, you're a spin holy us around place. This oh, pretty planet spinning through space This oh, pretty planet spinning through space, your garden, your harbor, your spinning place. Go this pretty planet spinning through space, your gentle blue jeffrey spin us around. This pretty planet spinning through space. This oh, pretty planet spinning through space, your garden, your harbor, your spin our solace. Go this pretty planet spinning through space, your garden, your harbor, your spin our solace. This pretty planet spinning through space. My second stop is here at Martin Luther King Jr.'s memorial. Better known to us perhaps than even Mahatma Gandhi, he was a devout disciple of Mahatma Gandhi and he insisted on carrying his campaign with nonviolence, which he succeeded in doing, ending up the same way as his mentor being shot and assassinated for his efforts. However, his dream is still with us and we are still very conscious of what he has given us and we hope someday that all of God's children can walk in peace. This is the Arch of Peace that David Graff built for me about five years ago. And uh, hopefully he's coming back this summer to spruce it up a little bit. Some of the paint is starting to fade. Oh, brother sun, you bring us light all shining round in fiery might oh sister moon you heal and bless your beauty shines in tenderness oh brother wind you sweep the hills your mighty breath both freshens and fills Oh, sister water, you cleanse and flow through rivers and streams in ice and snow. Oh, brother fire, you bring us night with all your dancing colored light. Oh, sister earth, you feed all things, all birds, all creatures, all scales and wings. Oh, sister death, you meet us here and take 
us to our God so near. O God of life, we give you praise for all your creatures, for all your ways. This is a memorial to Dennis Bathurst, a very dear friend of mine who passed just five years ago on the 2nd of April. Dennis came here every summer and volunteered his services to help keep the park open and maintained. On his passing, he left his entire fortune to the maintenance of this park so that it will have at least 15 years without having to do fundraising. We give a lot of thanks to Dennis for all of his efforts. This is Kateri Tekawitha, known as the Lily of the, of the uh, Mohawk. She was a member of the Haudenosaunee, the Mohawk tribe, and she became Christian and had to uh, flee to Canada because of the persecution against Christians in that day. You may remember the story of Isaac Jogues, the French missioner who came to this part of the country and wanted to convert all of the natives to Christianity. Unfortunately, he ended up being martyred for his efforts. Kateri, though, her spirit lives on and she worked for peace, particularly among the Five Nations. And for that, she's remembered as a peace-loving person. She lived in the Long House, which is the, the home of the Haudenosaunee. The teepee right here behind us belongs to the Western natives. Hancock was a member of the Sioux Nation. He had a vision when he was 13 years old that he was supposed to heal his people and bring peace to his tribes and the wonderful people that were going to come to visit him, the Anglos. He was one of the first to make contact with the American people and he devoted his life into making peaceful uh, resolutions between the natives and the persons that wanted to also live in his territory. Black Elk did become Christian, however, he really maintained most of his native spirituality. This native spirituality is very much like the ancient Christian spirituality, which the Christians enjoyed at least up until the time of Constantine. It was very earth-centered and very much communal. It took care of each other and it took care of Mother Earth. So we honor Black Elk. By inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All you need is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. 
inch by inch, row by row. Someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rains come tumbling down. Pulling weeds, picking stones. We are made of dreams and hopes. Need a place to call my own for the time is near at hand. Rain for rain, sun and rain. Find my way through nature's chain my body and my brain to the music of this land. Plant your rows straight and long, temper them with prayer and song. Mother Earth will make you strong if you give her love and care. An old crow watching hungrily from his perch in the yonder tree. In my garden, I'm as free as that feathered thief up there. So inch by inch, row by row, I'm gonna make this garden grow. All you need is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rains come tumbling down. Till the rains come tumbling down. Earth by Reverend Mark Bellatini of the First Unitarian Church of Columbus, Ohio. This is our earth. It falls through heaven like a pearl in a glass of plum wine. There are no other earths that I know of. There are no other skies that we have mapped. This is our earth. The oneness who gave birth to it remains nameless. There was no midwife then to bring us word of the birth cry. We only rejoice that it is. This is our earth. Ice caps its head. Glaciers clasp its feet. Warm wind, like the breath of a lover, breathes around its breast. Mountains thrust up to the clouds, bringing joy. Storms blow across its shores, bringing fear. Silvery fish capture sunlight and haul it down into the deep, as on shore valleys spread with ripening fruit. Cities teem with the poor and disenfranchised in the shadow of golden towers. Children live and also die. Highways throb. Monks sit in silence. Mothers work. Crickets chirp, teachers plan, engineers design, fathers write letters, people marry with and without the blessings of law, people cry, they laugh and brood and worry and wait. This is our earth. There are no other earths. Before its wonder, philosophers fall silent. Before its mystery, poets admit their words are shadow, not light. And all the great names religious teachers have left to us. Ishtar, Shekinah, Terra Mater, Suchness, Wakantanka, Gaia, suddenly refuse to announce themselves, and so we too fall silent entering the time where words end and reality begins.
is my fervent idea that we'll all be open to the will of our Creator and learn to live in harmony with all of creation, the earth, the air, the water, and the fire. May we all learn to live in harmony and peace with the two-legged, the four-legged, the winged, and the finned, all that roams this wonderful earth and the entire cosmos. So be it.